We spent a couple of videos looking at the notion of an M form. Now we want to look at differential M forms. But before we do that, I want to recall what the general shape of an M form is. So let's recall that an M form on TPRN can be written as the following linear combination. So we've got this sum over this multi-index capital I, but let's recall that capital I was made up of these numbers I1 up to IM that are increasing and between one and N. And then these right here are just coefficients. So we have AI1 up to IM, and then here we have dxi1 wedge all the way up to dxim and often we collapse these all into one thing which is just dx sub this multi-index i that's just a nice shorthand for this and we would often collapse this to a sub that multi-index i as well but let's recall that an m form is defined as a function from m copies of TPRN to the real numbers, and that function is defined in the following way. So we've got omega acting on v upper one up to v upper m. Now all of those are n-dimensional vectors from this tangent space. So what we get is the sum over these same coefficients so that were used to build the m form, and now we have a determinant of an m by m matrix. So notice the rows are given by our original vectors and the columns are given by these subscripts attached to the dxi1 up to dxim. So for example, the first row is v upper 1 and then lower i1 up to im. The second row is v upper 2 and then lower i1 up to im and so on and so forth. So we've got an m by m matrix there. We can take the determinant of that. Okay, so now moving on, a differential M form on Rn is given by a similar combination, but now our coefficients, instead of just being real numbers, are differentiable functions. But we've got the same kind of setup. We've got F sub lower this multi-index. So recall that that's this one of these I1s up to IM. And then we've got DX sub this multi-index. But again, that's one of these I1s up to IM, which gives us these wedges here. Okay, and then let's notice the following, that if we evaluate omega at a point P and RN, we get an M form on that tangent space. Okay, so I wanna look at an example. So let's say we've got this differential two form on R3. So we've got x squared dx wedge dy minus x cubed dz dy wedge dz. So I just wanna point out that for full evaluation, we have one plus two inputs, so three total inputs. One of the inputs is a base point and you can think about that as the point P from this construction of the tangent space, TPR3. And then we've got two more inputs, which are vectors. And these are two vectors, V upper one and V upper two in TPR3. So let's go ahead and pick a base point, do one stage of evaluation, and then pick two vectors and do the full evaluation. So let's maybe go ahead and suppose that our base point P is given by two, one, negative one. So let's see what we get if we plug that into omega. And the notation is usually you put omega sub p here. So that's going to give us, so notice here we have x squared. So that's going to give us 4 dx wedge dy. And now we have x cubed times z. So notice x cubed is going to give us 8. And then uh, z is a negative 1. That's going to flip this to a positive 1. So here we have plus 8 dy wedge dz. Okay. So now this is a one, so now this is a two form at TPR3. Okay, great. Now let's go ahead and pick two vectors. So let's say V1 is the vector one, negative two, three. And let's say V upper two is the vector two, zero, one. And let's see what we get when we evaluate this two form at these vectors. So we have omega P evaluated at V1, V2. So we've got the linear combination of the appropriate determinants of two by two matrices. So we've got four, and then the determinant of the two by two matrix ta taking the first two entries from these uh, vectors. So in other words, one, negative two, and two, zero. Great. And then we have plus eight, 
and then the determinant that we get from taking the last two entries from this matrix. So that's because we have dy, dz here. And then the determinant of the matrix that we get from taking the last two entries from these vectors. And that's because we've got dy, dz here. So here we have negative 2, 3, and 0, 1. Okay, so let's see what we get when we take these determinants. So this first one will have 4 times 0 minus negative 4. So that's going to be times another 4. And now we have plus 8 times negative 2. So we get 4 times 4 plus 8 times negative 2. So that's going to go ahead and give us 0. So we've evaluated this differential M form all the way down to a number. Okay, so I'll clean up the board and we'll do another example. Okay, so now we can push this one step up in generality and instead of evaluating it at a point and then two vectors, we can evaluate it at an arbitrary point and two vector fields. So let's go ahead and take our arbitrary point to be x comma y comma z and then we can take our two vector fields v1 to be maybe equal to x, 2y, z and then maybe xy. And then maybe we'll take a v upper 2 to be equal to y, x, z, and then y squared. Okay, so let's see what we get for this. So if we have omega evaluated at this pair of vector fields at an arbitrary point x, y, z, so we'll get x squared times the determinant of, so here we take the first two entries out of these vectors, so we have x, 2y, z, and then y, x, z, and then minus x cubed. And then because we have dy wedge dz here, we take the second two entries out of these uh, vectors. So we have 2yz, xy, xz, and then y squared. Great. And now it's just a pretty simple calculation. So that's going to give us x squared. And then the determinant of this thing will be x squared z minus 2y squared z. And now we have minus x cubed. Now we have uh, 2y cubed z minus x squared y z. And I won't simplify that at all, but I'll let you guys check that out if you want to. Now we can take this more general uh, setup to think about omega as being a differential two form and its input is a pair of vector fields. And then its output is a function. Because notice that's exactly what happened. We had omega, which was a differential two form on R3. We stuck in two vector fields, V upper one and V upper two, and we landed down here with just a function. Okay, I'll clean this up and we'll look at something more general. So let's go ahead and look at kind of the bigger picture of what's going on. So if you've got omega, which is a differential M form on Rn, then what it does is it accepts as its inputs m different vector fields on Rn, and then its output is a function from Rn to R. In other words, it's a scalar function from Rn to R. So let's go ahead and look at a little bit bigger of an example. So let's say we've got omega, which is x times y, dx wedge dy wedge dz, minus 2 times dx wedge dy wedge dw. So we're going to view this as a three form on R4 where we order the variables of R4 x, y, z, w. And so since this is a three form on R4, it accepts three different four dimensional vector fields and the output should be a scalar function from R4 to R. So let's say we've got these three four vector fields. So here, this one is x, y, w, z. This one is x squared, y, y, z, x, x squared. And then finally, we have w, z, x, y. So let's see what we get if we evaluate our differential form at these three four-dimensional vector fields. So let's see what this first part of the differential form gives us. So we'll have x times y. And now we need the determinant of the 3 by 3 matrix that we get from taking out the first, second, and third component. Because here we have dx wedge dy wedge dz. So here we'll have x, y, w. So that'll be from this vector. Now we have x squared y, y, z, x. That's from the second vector. And then finally, uh, w, z, x. Great, so just to reiterate, this term right here we get from this guy up here. 
and now minus twice, and now we get the determinant of the three by three matrix from the first, second, and fourth entries from these vector fields. So we have X, Y, Z in the first row. In the second row, we have X squared, Y, um, Y, Z, and then X squared. And then in the last row, we have W, Z, Y. So just to reiterate, that's what we get from dx wedge dy wedge dw. And now an arbitrary three form on R4 will obviously have two more components to it because we could have dx wedge dz wedge dw. We could also have dy wedge dz wedge dw. Um, but here we're just taking advantage of these two kind of elementary three forms. Now, notice when we take the determinant of these two three by three matrices, which I won't do, I'll let you check out how to do that if you need to recall, you will get a scalar function with four inputs, X, Y, Z, and W, and a single output. Great. So uh, that's a good place to stop this example and the video.